before we wrap up this series, uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll hop over to GitHub and I'll create um, a repository there, which will become what we call a kind of a central repository. Um, Git calls them a bear repository, um, as in nothing in it, not not the animal. Um, and I'll show you how this workflow changes just a little bit uh, when you're working with um, a central repository. All right, so I've hopped over to GitHub and I've created a uh, sample repository. Now I'm not gonna get into how to use GitHub in this, this series. This will show you how to um, clone somebody's repository or your own in GitHub. And uh, so what we're gonna do, if you click on this clone or download link, you'll see this URL here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. All right, and then we're gonna go back into our git bash, and we're gonna back out of this directory. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do what's called a clone. So git clone, and I'm gonna paste that URL. All right, now this is a public repository, so it should be all you need. And then if you don't give it a directory right here, um, it will, I think it creates a folder with the same name as the repository, um, but we're just going to go ahead and give it one. So after the URL, I'm going to call it uh, GitHub sample. So it's going to go to GitHub. It's going to find the repository and clone it. Now, um, when setting up a repository with GitHub, you have the option of adding a readme to um, put in the first commit, which is what I did. So we have one commit already and it's just the readme document. All right. So that's where we're at. Let's move into the directory. Do an LL and you can see there's the readme. You could do a git log and there you can see who did the commit. Um, it was me and when, and uh, the comment that was left, um, and you see the hash there. So let's say I want to make a change um, on my copy of the repository, and what we'll do is we'll just, for simplicity, we'll go and open up that README document, which this is Markdown language. If you're not familiar with it, don't worry about that. Just all we're looking for is the changes. Um, I'll add another heading here. All right, so we've made a change. Let's go ahead and close these. And let's go ahead and do a status. It shows that it's modified now. Again, this is our, our local, this is now our local copy of this repository. Everything we're doing here has no bearing on the repository, the, the central repository up on GitHub. Um, not at this point anyway. So we could at this point totally branch off from the repository that I've made here and go off and do whatever we wanted locally uh, with no problem. But if this is your repository on Git or you're part of the team that works on that repository, you're gonna to wanna to do what's called pushing your changes. So you're gonna add push to your workflow. So let's run through that workflow that we had earlier again. So we need to add this change to staging. And we know that this was the only thing we changed, so I'm gonna add all. And git commit message. Updated the README with um, stuff. All right, so we've committed it. Again, though, we've only committed it on our local repository. So if I did a git log, we have a hash. Um, we have a, we have it added to our log. But if I go over here to GitHub, still the same here. Nothing has changed. One commit. That's all. 
So I could keep going like this without any issue um, locally. Um, I could keep adding more and more commits and things like that. However, I am getting further and further behind um, any changes other people have made to the repository. Um, but uh, so let's, let's let's show what happens next if you want to go ahead and push this in to the uh, central repository. Git push. All right, and that was it. So now we come over here, reload the page. You see our changes. You see that we have two commits. You see who made the change. Uh, the last one with the uh, uh, message. And now you see the message here has been updated. You can go to readme here and see that's changed. We can go look at the history. These are the history. This is the history of just this file. Um, click on this. Here you can see GitHub's version of a diff, which looks a little different, um, a little fancier looking than what you'd see in the command line. But uh, so important thing is that the change was pushed into the repository and we are now kind of in sync. We're both at the same place. Um, that is until I make another change or somebody else makes another change. But we are equal here. Um, now I will note if you look at the commits here, this first one was committed by me here in GitHub. So it knew my information. That message we keep getting about commits and the configuration, um, that would be the benefit of putting in your information. So it knows, think where places like GitHub knows who you are. Right now, it's just kind of ambiguous. It knows my name and that's it. It doesn't know what user did it. So, all right, now let's take a look at the, the other part um, I mean, there's a lot of other parts that could be in here, um, but I want to, we've, we've talked about push. Now I want to talk about pull. Um, we've added push to the end of our workflow. Now we need to add pull to the beginning. Um, so right now, if I did get pull, it's going to tell me that everything's already up to date and it's not going to do anything. And what pull is doing is going to the central or remote repository on GitHub, seeing if we are in the same place, if the playhead is in the same place, um, that we are all in sync. Um, and we are, so it didn't do anything. If I make a change um, locally here, and I run a git pull, it's still gonna tell me everything's up to date because we haven't changed the repository um, that we're pulling from. So in order to use pull, something needs to be changed here in GitHub, um, which means one of two things. Somebody else made a change and pushed it up to the central repository, or what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change it on GitHub. So I've now added a commit. I go back to the main page here, it's gonna show we've got three commits. Here's the log. Now if we look at our log on the local copy, we still only have two commits. So we are not up to date. And so we're gonna to wanna to pull. Um, and polling is pretty important. We wanna pull often to make sure we're always up to date. So that's why I say adding that to the beginning of your workflow. You just came in for the day, run a git pull, and see if anything new has happened. So git pull. It realizes that there was one file change. And we are now showing all of the commits. So that is a very basic look at pushing and pulling um, and when you would use those. Again, if you're doing things totally locally, um, then you don't need to be using push and pull necessarily. So again, we didn't get into real technical aspects of Git and we didn't get into some of the more advanced things like tagging and branches and 
uh, things like that. And, and going back in time, um, I just wanted to give a real uh, basic look and understanding to what's going on here. Cause I know, I know a lot of people that have utilized things like GitHub, um, and it's been very helpful for them, but they have no idea, um, what Git is and, and why it's even a thing. Um, and, and, uh, hopefully this helps clear that up.